I, it is about on eight o'clock right now. I actually know, but I just finished my workout and I thought I would do kind of like a chit chat, get ready with me type thing. I wanted to kind of talk about, you know, anxiety, self love and things that I've learned on my own healing journey that I think have really impacted or changed my life. So I guess I kind of want to start this chat by just like saying that the one of the main things that has helped me uh, with my anxiety is actually understanding like the process and what happens in my actual body so like the science i guess behind it so um i'm really into like science books that kind of walk through like the brain process and all that fun stuff and i know not everybody's like into that so um <laughs> uh, i thought i'd kind of share give some insight to that and just like the aspects that has really helped me um so i read this book and it's called Rewire Your Anxious Brain. And I can't remember exactly the names of who it's by. They wrote this book um, talking about using neuroscience to overcome fear and anxiety. And this book really helps with the whole understanding what anxiety what's going on basically when anxiety comes on in your body and in your brain so basically what they explained is that there are two different pathways to anxiety so one way would be the the pathway through the cortex and the other pathway would be straight to the amygdala so so the amygdala is where the physiological responses of anxiety come in. So this is your, you know, your beating heart or, you know, sweating or whatever kind of physical symptoms you get of anxiety, hypoventilation, all comes uh, from the amygdala. So I went to go get the book. So it's called Rewire Your Anxious Brain. How do you use the neuroscience of fear to end anxiety, panic, and worry? And it's by Katherine Pittman and Elizabeth Carl. A great book if you wanna understand the, <clears throat> the science behind anxiety. Um, in the book, they say the role of the amygdala is to attach emotional significance to situations or objects and form emotional memories. And those emotions or emotional memories can be positive or negative. The amygdala is at the very heart of where uh, the anxiety response is produced. Although the cortex can initiate or contribute to anxiety, the amygdala is required to trigger the anxiety response. So your physiological symptoms that you would get. So the amygdala notices sounds, sights, and events that happen throughout our day that might be potentially harmful or dangerous to us. So it can initiate a um, response to the body, uh, like a fear response, so it can prep you for any kind of danger. It really does help protect us in that fight or flight um, if actually something was happening. So I wanted to share a little bit about the amygdala and the role it plays anxiety first because even through the two pathways, there's, so there's the cortex pathway and then straight to the amygdala pathway. And so, but each of them cross the amygdala. It's just like the way it happens. You either can go straight to the amygdala um, or can go through the cortex, through our thoughts that trigger anxiety through the amygdala, which causes the physiological responses. So cortex-based anxiety. So in our cortex, that's where our, the pathway of our thoughts are, you know, logic, imagination, visualizations, like that's all happening within our, our cortex. So if we are thinking thoughts or having thoughts that are making us anxious or feel nervous, it can trigger a response in our amygdala, which can actually cause the physiological responses of anxiety. So if feelings of not being good enough or, 
you know, get, not getting recognition is like a fear response it will play out through the amygdala and that's why you can potentially see panic attacks or um, hyperventilation happening um, when you think of those certain events or situations that you were in or things that happened or even potential like anticipated anxiety as well can cause uh, certain types of physiological responses. I wish we could have better lighting in this bathroom. Maybe that works a little bit better. Look at that baby hair. Who, uh, who does anybody else struggle with like baby hairs? Because like, look at this. It's actually ridiculous. Like ponytails are just difficult. <laughs> I can't wear a ponytail or a button because I just it's up to here. I guess another thing to note about the amygdala is it gets information from the thalamus, and I know I'm using a lot of like scientific <laughs> terms here, but basically. Um, any kind of emotional memories or experiences that you have like travel to from the thalamus to the amygdala. So the amygdala receives information before the cortex does basically. So when we're actually in a dangerous situation, our amygdala response can protect us before our cortex even knows what the danger is. So you can um, go from like receiving information and it goes through the thalamus and then it can go to your cortex where you're having, um, you know, fearful thoughts or anxious thoughts about it. And then it can travel to the amygdala to produce that anxiety response. And then the other path would be like, you get the information, it goes through the thalamus and then directly to the amygdala. So really through, if we're going through the cortex, it's basically our thoughts that are causing the anxiety. So the initial information or the sensory information that we receive could have been a trigger, but it couldn't necessarily be what we're anxious about. It could just be a conversation or whatever it is. So you're not initially anxious, but then it travels through the thalamus. So now you're, you're having this conversation and you think about it. And then as the more you think about it, the more you start to get anxious about it or nervous about it. And then that causes the anxiety response. Whereas if you went just to the amygdala, your body is receiving that information as dangerous and it's going straight there. It's not even entering your thought process. So a good way to kind of think about the amygdala response. Have you ever been like going downstairs in your basement trying to look for something and you know, you jump up in the air because you thought, <laughs> you know, a coat or something was like a person or whatever. Um, so that's a good example of the amygdala working. So the amygdala was triggering kind of like a, a response, like a fearful response because you got scared uh, to try to protect you before your cortex actually realized that that was just a coat, that there's nothing there. So the amygdala in the sympathetic nervous system is what causes that fight or flight or freeze, as we all know the term. <laughs> and what I found really interesting with all of this is that when the fight or flight or freeze response happens, the amygdala is basically in the driver's seat and you're a passenger. And that's why a lot of the times when we're experiencing anxiety or panic attacks, we almost feel like we're observing ourselves like reacting to the situation, but we don't actually feel in control of it. So, and it's because we're actually not. So there's many connections between the amygdala and the cortex, but the amygdala has the power, like can overpower the cortex. So it basically shuts it off. So we physically or scientifically do not have the power of our thoughts when the amygdala fight or flight responses are happening. So I wanted to read this part in the book that kind of explains it, so I don't know if I explained it like perfectly, but uh, there are many connections from the amygdala to the cortex, allowing the amygdala to strongly influence the cortex responding on a variety of levels, while fewer connections travel from the cortex to the amygdala. Therefore, it's literally true that you can't think when the amygdala takes control. The thinking processes of the cortex are shut off and you're under the influence of the amygdala. 
So that is so powerful, especially when it comes to the whole idea of people telling you, just calm down, just relax. It literally does not work. Scientifically, that does not <laughs> help or work. And that is honestly why I always say that sometimes the way out of anxiety is through it. You have to go through it in order to, um, for it to like surpass. And that's why everything is temporary because eventually um, you'll come down from a panic attack or, you're, or you'll come down from anxiety. And it sucks to go through it, but like this is where I'm saying like the understanding of what is actually help or like what is actually happening in your brain, it has helped me so much, especially with panic attacks. I rarely get panic attacks anymore because I understand the way my brain will process and where that fight or flight begins. So I'm able to kind of change my thinking or change my thoughts before you know, I reach that point. So because I know that once I do and it hits the amygdala and I'm having the physiological responses that I need to go through it. That's the only kind of way out of it for me or it's like the only way out of anxiety is through. So I would have to feel those emotions and I think a lot of people try to resist which makes it worse and then you get even more overwhelmed or scared of what's happening. So whenever I feel my hands tingling or I'm lightheaded or my chest is really tight, I try to pinpoint right away what I'm, what I feel like I'm anxious about. Cause a lot of the time for me, it is cortex based. So it has to be my thinking. So any kind of sensory information I receive, I, if I think about it in kind of a negative light or um, it's a trigger, that's something that makes me anxious that will trigger my physiological responses for a lot of people though things can be triggered straight to the amygdala so an example they actually said in the book is like a veteran who is dealing um, with PTSD he had extreme panic attacks or physiological responses to soap like a bar of soap which you would think like, oh, it's just like a bar of soap. But through therapy, he kind of realized the reason why the bar of soap was a trigger for him, that directly he got physiological responses and anxiety and panic attacks over it because that was the same scent or bar of soap that he used while he was in war. So it makes sense. You might not connect the two, but the bar of soap was a trigger for an event that caused a negative emotional um, experience that caused severe anxiety, fear, or whatever it is, stress. And so that plays out in um, the individual's life now. So understanding the triggers is important as well, but that's like a good example of like the amygdala a based anxiety where it goes straight to the amygdala and then you're not sure why you're like why I don't understand why this is happening kind of thing but that's why I honestly believe in reframing because this is just in my own experience with anxiety and knowing that my anxiety comes from the cortex reframing is super powerful because it literally changes our thinking and when we change something into a positive experience it hits our amygdala with a positive experience so we don't actually experience the physiological responses of anxiety but then there are anxieties as well that are amygdala based so i think it just depends on the scenario um for me at least so i know when it comes to like presentations or speaking in front of people public speaking or meetings sometimes at work um, I will get physiological responses right away because of my body's natural responses to a negative experience in school. You know, when they used to pick on you in school and you didn't know the answer, so you just freeze. So that happened to me more than I can count. And each one of them was like a traumatic experience. So my body naturally is going to give me the physiological responses to that. Um, and the thing is the way 
out of that is through. So a lot of the things I do help to trigger that parasympathetic nervous system. So that's why I talk about meditating before events like that. Or I talk about breathing techniques. Breathing techniques are huge because those are scientifically proven to trigger our parasympathetic nervous system to uh, bring those physiological responses down. And the same thing with physical activity. Physical activity can reduce the adrenaline you feel because that's really what it is. Adrenaline increases as we experience anxiety. And that's why um, you can find intense physiological responses as well and they just kind of need to be released. They bring down the physiological responses of anxiety. So yes, you still have to go through the anxiety, but it's not as long and it's not as intense. Another thing that's scientifically proven is the more you practice these things, or the more that you practice reframing thoughts, the more that you practice the breathing techniques or when the actual physiological responses happen, your body starts to get comfortable and starts to do it more naturally. So, you know, it might not seem like it's working at the beginning, but the more you continue and the more that you do it, the lower the physiological responses will be, the quicker the anxiety happens and you can get back to normal or whatever you want to call it, like back to yourself. Because when you have an understanding um, it's easier to like overcome anxiety when it comes on because you know, you know exactly what's happening in your body and because you know what's happening in your body, you can take preventative measures to, again, make it either happen faster or like not, so it doesn't have to happen at all. <laughs> I went from having panic attacks almost daily in high school to having maybe a couple or a few a month and but i will say that the couple or few that i have in the month are very not even compared to the ones i used to have in high school so i got hospitalized for panic attacks and i haven't gone to the doctor or have not gone hospitalized for anxiety in years because the anxiety attacks that I feel now, they're physiological responses, so I can cry and I'll have a tight chest and you know, sometimes I can feel like my breathing getting heavy. So I still experience those, but I'm able to walk myself and talk myself out of things a lot quicker. So my anxiety attacks are not long at all. When they do come on, because they still do, because I am still practicing what I'm preaching every single day, eventually you know who knows they could go away but if they don't at least i have the managing techniques to bring it down quicker and that's why i always say it's important to experience your emotions as well if you are feeling sad um sometimes your body just needs that release and that's okay as well um having that release and just like going through it again just makes it go quicker see usually like when makeup gurus do this they tell you what products use I didn't do that so just like use whatever foundation you use the concealer I didn't even put powder on today because my skin has been super dry it gets super dry in the winter so I don't even bother with powder in the winter uh, bronzer blush eyelashes eyebrows like that's all I do so excuse what you have <laughs> as soon as I bring awareness to what I'm thinking about and how my body's feelings right away I'll do some reframing so when I'm having anxiety at night, I tell myself <clears throat> kind of the same affirmation to help me calm me down. And uh, that is, I am safe, I am healthy, and I am strong. And I will repeat that to myself and just focus on those words. Focus on what I'm saying. So I am safe, what does safety look like? So I will think about being in my warm bed and, you know, maybe looking up at my ceiling and looking, looking around my room, seeing the things that inspire me and <clears throat> things that represent who I am. I'll think about like my family and my family being safe and everyone around me being safe. And then with my health, I will do the same thing. What does healthy look like? How does healthy look like with me? 
you know? And then I would say, I am strong. Because I'm strong, because I can get through this. Look how far I've come. And this is something that I've experienced before that I've gone through. So I know that I can do this. Another affirmation that I really love is, I am safe in my body, even if it does not feel like it. And that one always helps because I always talk about how the fake it until you make it doesn't work for me. So I can't necessarily lie to myself, you know, and say, no, you're happy right now, or you're positive, or like, you're completely fine. Like I can't tell myself that because it almost makes things worse because it's just reiterating that I'm not. So instead, I try to tell myself the truth. I am acknowledging the fact that I am not feeling the best, but I still know that I am safe. So those are the simple waves we are working with today. I'm probably gonna wear a hat today, we'll see. I don't know, we'll decide later after I get changed. Okay, let's go pick out an outfit for today. Okay, well, this is the final outfit we're working with. Got my hat, just a t-shirt and some mom jeans. And we are rolling. <laughs> but I think I'm gonna end this video here uh, as I attempt to do this. Anyway, um, I hope that you guys found it helpful and you enjoyed it. And you know what? Let's leave the best advice you've ever received or heard about overcoming anxiety that has changed your life leave it in the comments down below and you know what who knows it might help somebody else um, in their journey as well but i hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your day and i will talk to you all in my next video bye